Hi, I'm Paul Sorensen from Universal Synaptics. In this video, I'm going to explain and demonstrate why the intermittent no fault found problem is so prevalent in the electronics industry today. As avionics and other electronic systems age, their connectivity elements become intermittent and lead to failures. However, a high percentage of the time the root causes of these failures are not detectable when tested with conventional automatic test equipment and other instruments. To demonstrate this testing void problem, we've assembled a variety of instruments that are commonly used to test for and troubleshoot both hard and intermittent problems. One piece of test equipment that most of you may not be aware of is the IFD3000 from Universal Synaptics. And let me briefly explain what's going on here. Right now, this tester is monitoring the same line as the rest of this equipment in parallel. Uh, however, the IFD3000 can do an unlimited amount of uh, lines under test at the same time and do them all continuous and simultaneous. What you see on the screen here is 256 individual test points and as this picks up intermittence you'll see a column grow on the test point line that's experiencing the intermittence. What you're going to hear is a synthesized voice uh, telling you in, uh, in your own terminology what that line is as well. And that's something you can easily set up when you create a map file of what's connected. For this demonstration of why there's such a large no fault found problem out there, we're going to use a steady 5 volt DC power supply. And we've got all these instruments right here all connected in parallel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the current flow momentarily D3. just by D3. touching D3. and releasing D3. these conductors D3. here. D3. 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 The synthesized voice D3. you're hearing in the background is the IFD3000 D3. calling out test point 3 as being intermittent. D3. 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 D3, 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 D3. D3, D3, D3. As D3. we speed up the intermittency that we are creating, D3. you are going to see D3. some of these devices start D3. to drop out of being able to D3. detect any intermittency D3. at all. D3. D3. The programmable digital D3. multimeter is the backbone D3. of the testing industry. As D3. you can see, the meter has a difficult D3. time tracking the voltage changes D3. that I am creating. D3. This difficulty is due to D3. the high levels of digital D3. averaging that are employed D3. in the meter to enable it to reach D3. its high levels of accuracy. D3. You have just seen if any intermittent is long enough and of sufficient ohmic magnitude, virtually any testing device can see it. However, D3. if we apply an intermittent stimuli D3. that is slightly more difficult, D3. all the standard analog and digital devices D3. fail to detect D3. it. By simply D3. rubbing our demonstration contacting D3. surfaces D3. together, we can simulate D3. what would be seen in D3. any stressful operational environment D3. where the contacting surfaces D3. of any loose or corroded connector pins or solder D3. joints D3. will, on a micro level, D3. slip past each other, D3. creating D3. micro breaks which D3. can only be detected by the IFD's D3. neural sensors. D3. It's important to note that Keithley's seven and a half digit multimeter demonstrated here is in fact one of the most capable meters ever produced. However, when this or any other testing device is misapplied for the detection of aging intermittent problems, then it is the fault of the test engineer and not the equipment manufacturer. Generally, the higher the accuracy of a digital multimeter in digits to the right of the decimal, will equate proportionally to its lack of speed to catch a random intermittent. It's simply the wrong approach for this problem. This chart shows the intermittence detection capabilities of a variety of commonly used test and diagnostic devices when testing just a single circuit. As shown, digital devices with all their measurement averaging 
employed to achieve phenomenal measurement accuracy, are practically blind to intermittent events. Common analog devices are better, but you had better not blink or turn your head during operation. What this all boils down to is that intermittent events, by their very definition, occur randomly in time and place. The quality factor that is essential for success, then, is not accuracy, it's probability. For instance, what is the probability that you will be testing the right line in a system that might have hundreds of circuits and what is the probability that your measurement device will actually be taking a reading and be sensitive enough to pick it up at precisely the same time that an intermittent event occurs. This is the critical factor. The boost in probability you get using the IFDs all points all the time parallel and analog neural network technology can perhaps be illustrated best using Einstein's formula of E equals mc squared. Just as this formula shook the foundations of physics 100 years ago, the same relationships explain the power of probability when testing for random intermittent events. In our formula, E is the efficiency or probability gains that the IFD has over another testing technology or device. Efficiency gain is derived by calculating M, or measurement inertia, which is the ratio of the lowest resolution of a particular device divided by the lowest resolution level of the IFD when testing just a single circuit. C designates the number of circuits that are simultaneously under test with the IFD, and this value is squared to factor for the length of time the other device will take to scan through and test all these circuits in a particular unit under test. Simply put, if a given test device, such as a scanning continuity tester, takes one second to test one circuit, the IFD with its 330 nanosecond minimum resolution will perform 3 million equivalent tests over the same time period. If you have 100 lines to test, the total time in test is 100 seconds, and with the IFD, an individual test point will receive 300 million tests for intermittency down to the 330 nanosecond level. The reason you square the number of circuits being tested is because while you are testing any one test point, the IFD is also simultaneously testing the other 99. The difference in efficiency with this scenario is therefore approximately 30 billion to 1, a notable achievement by any measure, and a solid explanation of why the IFD catches these aging intermittent problems while other testing equipment fails. As you've just seen, these common testing tools, with the exception of the IFD, have all failed to detect obvious intermittent circuit events. And in addition, their capability has been limited to just a single line or circuit under test. Because of this, the reliability of any items tested with them is unknown and is questionable at best. In contrast, the IFD can test hundreds or even thousands of lines simultaneously without any drop in speed or sensitivity. With the IFD, test coverage will increase exponentially by the number of circuits to be tested and that can make all the difference in the world.